like and subscribe right now, or else this will be in your bed tonight. r slash ask reddit by planet reddit. What is the most bonkers thing that happened to you or your work and your employer study I learn it expected you to continue your work day. Right after Hurricane Sandy, the bank I worked for had no power for days, so obviously we couldn't do any banking, rather than just close. My manager insisted that the entire staff show up for shifts as usual, just so we could sit in our normal seats in our uniforms and winter jackets to tell any customers who wandered in that we didn't have power and couldn't help them with anything at all. Just about every single person asked us some variation of then what the hell are you doing here? It sucked. On the bright side you got paid for doing nothing. I'd rather not get paid than sit in a freezing cold bank for 8 hours a day. Burn money for warmth. I was working at a pet store and was used to being bitten by the pets we sold. Hamsters. Ferrets. Birds. No big deal. This day, however, as I was helping a woman who had brought her dog in, it attacked me. Luckily it was a smallish medium sized dog so it didn't get my face. But I had big bleeding holes all up and down one arm. The lady never said sorry, and my manager told me to go to the back, get cleaned up, and come back out and ring on the resistor. So I did, with big blood splatters all over my yellow uniform shirt. Now that's a shitty boss, opening the company up to a lawsuit if you had gotten an infection or a permanent injury when you were on the clock, not allowing you to seek immediate medical treatment or stopping that customer and getting her information. I hope you quit that job and complain to corporate if this was a chain store. Not only that but the first thing that I'd be doing is confirming that the dog had all its shots. Rabies is not anything to fuck around with and if I remember correctly, it can lie dormant and then randomly incubate years later. If ops day wasn't ruined before, it sure is now. The air conditioning broke down and people started passing out from the heat, but they let us take our ties off, so that was generous. I worked at a restaurant when the AC broke, it was 85 degrees Fahrenheit plus for a week or more. My manager told corporate to get someone to come fix it and they did knuckle. hole. Finally a customer complained to corporate that the restaurant was too hot and they fixed it the next day. That's exactly how we got the AC fixed at my job too. Customer complaints go miles further than employee complaints. Sometimes I outright encourage customers to do this. It's too hot in here. Oh, isn't it terrible? Here's the number to corporate to complain. Hurricane Katrina was going to make landfall that day, and the owner of the restaurant I was managing at the time got super pissed when I said I wasn't coming in. He wouldn't accept that, and kept bargaining with me. Okay, you can go in for 4 hours, and I can get other manager to come relieve you. No, he was like, well go hide your keys then so we can have someone else pick them up. Absolutely, after the storm hit and devastated New Orleans, the owner was calling me because they needed people to open the restaurant. The roof had blown off of my house, and I was asking him where was I going to live while I worked for him. He said to just get a hotel, as if he was paying me enough to afford such a thing. I also think hotels were pretty well full, not sure. I really don't get that, not at all. None of it, I mean. Not seeing how a personal situation affects someone. Yep, but a whole devastated region and you still think of opening before anything else? What the yuck? Oh so, I forgot to add. He did get the restaurant opened very quickly after the storm. Like before everyone else. Business was booming temporarily. But the company has gone out of business since because he thought he could drop the Benegans branding. And come up with his own stuff. He came up with shenanigans. Sounds familiar, right? Like the movie Waiting? This was filmed in one of his Benegans locations that was just outside New Orleans. Hey father, what's that place you like to eat at so much? College professor, not a boss, in college. We had our final semester presentations that counted for 60% of our grade. I was on blood thinners at the time and the night before my presentation. I had an accident in the home and split my head open. 12 hours later, it was still bleeding. First thing I did in the morning was email my professor with an explanation and a timestamp photo of blood running down my face. I asked if I could present the following day instead and said that was not possible without a doctor's note. I had to go to the doctor, pay a $32 copay just so the teacher could write on a note Philip's head will not stop bleeding because of medication he is on. 
I can't believe I had to write you this note. Should have gone to class and tried to do your presentation. Maybe go out of your way to pass the dean or security guard. 100% just stand at the front and start talking. Don't bring a towel or anything just let the blood run down your face while you make your presentation. Prof will look real stupid real quick. Just put up the email with the professor on the projector and talk about the difference between being right and doing the right thing, in a purely ethical philosophical way. I told my employer I was moving across country and that my last day was in two weeks. The day came and they called me as I was on the road asking if I was going to come in. My boyfriend had a similar experience to this. He didn't move across the country, but he did change jobs industries, gave his old boss his two weeks. They were all really happy for him about his new job. All was well. He worked his last day. They threw a little lunch party for him. He said goodbye to everyone. Then went to his new job the following day. At which point, his old boss and several co-workers called him freaking out. Asking him where he was and why he wasn't at work. His phone was off and in his locker. As it was his first day at his new job. So they ended up calling me to see if he was dead or in the hospital or something. I was just like, dude, his last day was yesterday, you knew this, you threw him a party, what the heck. Haha, <laughs> similar experience here, I negotiated with my boss to take 5 months off because I was going overseas. At first they said no, so I said fine I'll just resign and they backtracked, gave me the 5 months off and paid, which is what I wanted, did all the paperwork, had a mini sort of going away do for lunch on my last day. Then had a final weekend off to get some of my things in order. Monday rolls around. I'm about to board my plane when I get a call from our administration. You're late for work. Um. No. I'm. Going overseas? Turns out no one bothered to process my forms. Or find a replacement for my 32 hours contract. WTF. There were only 7 people in my department. 2. It wasn't like I wouldn't be missed. Edit. I gave them like 3 months notice too. Dave's not here man. Federal agents with a search warrant shut down all the computers so they could image the drives. We puttered around 4 hours before we finally got sent home at the regular time. However, long lunches and gym visits were permitted. Gym visits as in there is a gym inside the office, or you guys could freely head to your gym and work out a couple hours. Probably the former, a lot of big companies have on site gyms these days. Can confirm, probably helps them get a discount on health insurance plans. Someone spilled, or poured out, a bottle of deer attractant on the floor under the shelves in the sporting goods section of Walmart. Stank of deer piss for, well, actually, it probably still does. They never cleaned it, and we had ammo to sell. Did your Walmart fill up with deer afterwards? No but it seemed to draw a lot more jackasses than usual. The power went out at 8am, but we weren't allowed to go home. We sat around doing nothing for nearly 8 hours, just in case the power came on. Then our boss said if it didn't come on by 4pm, we could go home and the work schedule would be pushed ahead a full day. Power came on at 3.50pm, and we had to do our full workload. Yay for that. Hope you got overtime. I had something similar when I worked as a helping hand. Needed to be done that day. Now I work on computers. Power went out. I was bored out of my mind for 3 hours, but got paid for doing nothing. But at least no one forced me. This happened to me. Except they kept me and one other girl there in case it came back on and sent everyone else home. Finally at 3 they let us leave only to recall me when I was halfway home because the power was back and I lived the closest. I was the only one told to come back in. Yep, that call would have gone straight to voicemail. Worked for a small graphic design company fresh out of school. They used cracked software. Didn't really pay anyone and were generally shady but I didn't really think anything of it. Until the FBI showed up. Apparently they also didn't pay their taxes and so my boss was taken away in handcuffs and the office was closed. Or so I thought. Our boss called our creative director from jail and told us to work from this CD motel room he set up to finish up Theber and Inment or else we wouldn't get paid. Nobody showed apparently as we all decided now would be a good time to look for new opportunities. Wow that's crazy. Using pirated software is just unacceptable for a business that deals with graphic design. 
join our community discord, link in description. Snowstorm dumped like 6 inches of snow the day before and then rain creating a sheet of ice on the roads. People were literally abandoning their vehicles on the sides of the highway because the driving conditions got so treacherous it was safer to walk. I had just recently gotten an all-wheel drive SUV and was expected to come in that next day, while my co-worker who had a two-wheel drive sedan was allowed to stay at home until the ice melted. I tried explaining that or does not automatically mean safe to operate on icy roads. I didn't even have chains yet at the time, but that went over like a lead balloon. There's a saying in the Canadian Army that four-wheel drive just means you can get all four wheels stuck. It's accurate. I love the morons in lifted four-wheel drive trucks that act like the laws of physics don't apply to them when speeding in icy weather. The universe might let you get moving slightly easier in certain conditions but it doesn't mean you will stop any faster with no traction when your unweighted rear loses traction. So true, I hate laughing at others misfortunes, but where I live there's a two lane cars only highway and people often treat stretches of it like a raceway. One day, it had snowed and then started to sleet, conditions were not good, traffic was on the lighter side because many people stayed home, most of the people on the road were taking it slow and steady and things were moving fine until Mr. Stupid in some honkin' huge white SUV starts bobbing and weaving in and out of traffic, because he had somewhere to be and, damn it, he had four wheel drive, whatever, I just got out of the way and let Mr. Stupid continue on, not worth risking an accident, well, sure enough, about 2 miles down the road, what's sitting on its roof about 50 feet off the roadway, yep, it was Mr. Stupid's white SUV, I do hope he was not injured, but man if that's not a case of play stupid games, win stupid prizes I don't know what is. People fail to realize that 4 wheel drive is not 4 wheel stop. Automotive painting. Been complaining about my mask parts needing replacing for a few weeks. Finally my mask broke and I refused to paint because toxic fumes were coming into my mask. Being the only automotive painter, work came to a halt. I was told to get in there and paint or else. I pointed at the security camera and asked him to say that again but a little louder. He fired two people that day but I wasn't one of them. Do not cock tease me like that. Why did he fire two other people? Because I stood up to him and he couldn't fire me without a lawsuit. So he fired the new girl in charge of ordering but she wasn't the one who had been blowing me off buying replacement safety gear. They hired her two weeks prior and did been asking for parts for a month. The second person was a carpenter. Probably looked at him funny or something. The GM enjoyed people cringing when he came out onto the warehouse floor. When I finally walked out seven other people did too in the following days. I love it when one person walks and is suddenly followed by more people. It's like oh, shit I forgot that was an option. At a factory, sliced my finger open using a cutting blade that had been partially broken, resulting in the spare blade hidden inside it coming partially out of an opening. I grabbed the blade and started using the proper portion of it, but I had unknowingly placed my right index finger right over the exposed spare. I started slicing with the blade and cut a line down my finger from about the middle to the tip. Immediately started dripping blood all over. Called my boss over radio. They ushered me into the nurse's office. They didn't want me to go to a hospital or any form of urgent care because that would have been an incident and reset the days since last incident tracker that people got bonuses for. I was young and let them pressure me into accepting that. So they wrapped it up tight until my finger looked like it had a cast on it and sent me back to work. It wasn't that deep. Although it looked nasty, it probably could have used stitches. It healed okay, but I still have a noticeable scar. I work in OSHA and this is why shit like bonuses for safe work gets me heated. It definitely shouldn't be allowed because it stops workers from getting proper protections and reporting injuries that could cause major problems. Sorry that happened to you. We give bonuses out for near miss reporting. That's fine, right? Definitely. That's great I'd say. Depending on who you talk to those are leading indicators for injury and can be really beneficial for building OSHA programs to prevent the near misses from becoming actual injuries. There is potential for misuse I suppose but investigating something is never a bad thing in my opinion. Not work, 
But in HS on 9-11 we had a teacher who instead we go about our normal day and speak nothing of what happened about 10 minutes after the second plane hit. Every other classroom in the school had the news on and she refused to even acknowledge what was going on. But, so weird. All my teachers at least had the news on mute. I think there was some teaching but mostly about the current event. Since it was obvious to them that it was history in the making. It was history in the making. And you can study that in history class. Arts teacher taught math. Important to note that well prepared teachers do their best to protect their students. There was hours days years of chaos during and after that day. That teacher didn't do what was best for you. But I can say with 99% conviction that the teacher thought they were doing what was best for you at the moment. When it was hours before Hurricane Harvey was going to make landfaller and they were still tentative about releasing us from work so that we would have time to go and board up our homes, stock up on supplies or evacuate if needed. We were blessed by being allowed to leave one hour early. Sarcasm was meant on that last sentence. Yeah that was so much fun. I remember filling sandbags at work and listening to the radio as they said it was up to cat 3 after being at a 1 that morning. I was pretty worried I wouldn't be able to evacuate in time. I'd also just moved to Texas and had no idea where to go. Which wasn't helped by my D-head boss saying San Antonio wasn't going to be any better off. Good times. I work as part of a maintenance team for a community of 750 homes. We put up hurricane shutters for about 400 homes. We work as long as it takes to put them up. Hurricane Matthew was expected to make landfall just south of us. And we got a late start in putting up shutters. I worked 16 hours days so I had time to evacuate to Tampa. In the end it went north of us. And I won 1500 at Hard Rock on 3 card poker. Working in McDonald's. I was supposed to do the overnight shift but I was sick. I mean couldn't get out of bed and throwing up sick. Called that day. Hours in advanced. To say I couldn't make it in. I had been working there quite a few years so they knew I was competent and would never call in unless necessary. I got written up because they needed me and because the yucking hygiene inspector was coming in in the morning. I couldn't believe it. I quit not long after. Edit. To clarify. I would have still been there when he arrived. Looking deathly ill and potentially throwing up most of my shift whilst preparing food for customers. Part of me wished I had so I could tell him I was forced to work despite my condition but that wouldn't have been fair on the customers. I recently got chewed out for calling in sick with the flu. I work in a warehouse and bulk loading bag pouring sugar directly into semi trailers. Everything has to be GMP so any sort of bodily fluid anywhere needs to be cleaned properly and any sugar gets tossed. I was vomiting and they still expected me to drive 45 minutes to stand on top of semi trailers for 12 hours and watch sugar flow. But that wouldn't have been fair on the customers. Mate. It was a McDonald's. The customers have accepted their fate. I was working at a hotel on the bar and as a waitress. One day a couple of hours before my shift, I started feeling really sick. I have stomach issues but knew it was different. I called and said I was not feeling great. They insisted I come in. My mum had to drive me in because I felt too sick to drive. I worked an hour. Got to the point of I'm definitely throwing up and told them I had to go else I was going to throw up on the customers. They told me that they weren't happy and they better see me tomorrow. I had Norovirus which comes on really quickly and emailed the next day saying this and that I wouldn't be coming in till 48 hours has passed. They were generally nasty people to work for. Cliquey. Rude. Stole tips. Demanding and unreasonable. When I told them about a holiday I'd had booked since before they employed me, they asked for my flight number so they could put me on shift 4 hours after it landed. Then got pissed when I was late cause my plane got delayed. Well. You didn't want to stay at Amy's Baking forever anyway. I used to work on cruise ships. Noro. Meant your behind was quarantined and you weren't going to be seeing another human being for a little under a week. These people are dumb as hell. You would have put the entire crew out of commission if you had gone in. Though. That would have been hilarious. I got a call one day from my cousin saying our house had been broken into. I went home to deal with it and file a police report. And it was honestly so stressful. My supervisor then rang me to ask what time I was planning on coming back to work later in the day because she had paperwork for me to finish. My truck was stolen overnight. Call my boss and tell him what happening. 
he seems more annoyed than I was. Spend 4 hours waiting to file the report. Another hour on the phone with insurance. I'm pissed and stressed. Call my boss to update him. He answered the phone you coming in soon. I say a kit and walk 5 miles to work. I clock in and get called to the office because I was late. Get demoted because my position needs to be reliable. Dude 4 years and I've never clocked in late. Always a few minutes early and I get this shit because my arcing truck was stolen. Whatever I'll put in applications when I get home and ditch them when I find something else. Two days later all the regional managers and district managers are upstairs. Firing him because of some questionable moves he made. New manager sees my worth and is getting me an even better position than before. Uck Paul. Was a welder in a factory. Five minutes after I got back from lunch. A nice bit of slag somehow made it under my glove and burnt my wrist. I quickly dropped the welding gun. Trying to get the glove off to get the burning metal off. I tried to grab the gun with my other hand so it wouldn't clatter to the floor and possibly break. But I missed the handle and instead grabbed the hose a little under. The tip of the welding gun swung down. And the hot wire went straight into my leg. I pulled it out and gimped to my lead. Explaining what happened and if I could go treat the wound. The response? You're behind. You better hit your number. I didn't get even a bandage. It wasn't recorded. And I still had 6 hours to go. Wasn't the worst pain I've endured. But would not recommend. But now I've got matching scars on my wrist and my leg. And you also got a really nice settlement right? Right? LOL if we got settlements for getting burned there would be no welders left. It's shitty he couldn't dress the wound and act up K in his foreman's part. Absolutely. But getting burned is part of the job. I misunderstood what you were saying. Sorry. It's not good the fireman wouldn't let them clean the wound. I cannot comprehend how can somebody see a person with visible injuries and in pain. And not have a single shred of compassion. Or empathy. Or any other sign of a sliver of a soul. Can you imagine having a person ask you to take care of their injuries? Why do you even need to ask such a thing? And your response being basically human equivalent of an answering machine? With all the soul of an automated register. Place item in bagging area. You're behind. Hit your number. Should've shoved that welding gun up his behind. Worked as a busboy for a now closed restaurant. I came in for my shift one time when they had roofers working on the roof. The section of roof they worked on was all terracotta roof tile and they needed to remove it all to replace it. The upper management decided it was a great idea to have this work done during the lunch hours and were open for those hours. Little did they all know as there were cracks on the ceiling inside and while the removal was happening the terracotta tile dust was raining inside all over the guests and their food. Management still tried to continue restaurant service as usual but the guests were having none of it and just walked out. I come to an empty restaurant littered with tile dust and we were expected to clean it up before dinner started. It took at least a month for my lungs to clean out that shit because I was not provided any respiratory gear to clean up that mess edit. The restaurant in question was Charlie's Crab Palm Beach owned by the Landry's Corporation. That sounds like it could have been a really good lawsuit. I was washing dishes at a shit behind diner when the grill hood broke down. The restaurant started filling up with smoke. Predictably, they refused to shit down even as the smoke stung our eyes and everyone started to get lightheaded. I left and called the fire department, for which I was screamed at during my next shift in the middle of a crowded dining room. Got an earful about how important to the community it was that they stay open and how smoke from grills isn't harmful and it's really just a comfort thing for the grill cook. Also, he told me that the town's fire department was going to beat me up for wasting their time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.